All right, good morning, Year 5s. Today for maths, we are continuing on with our fair weather investigation. Today, we're going to have a look at the rainfall for each month throughout the year. And we're specifically looking at the average amount of rain that falls per month to help us with our investigation of to which time of year would be appropriate to hold like a show or a carnival. So the first thing you will have already done is collected the data on how much rain falls each month of the year in Melbourne. What we're going to do now is you're going to have a go at creating your own column graph. To do this, you'll go into today's assignment, click add or create Google Doc, just like we did last week when we made the line graph. So your Google Doc will pop up as a blank document. It should already be named for you. Mine isn't named because I'm not logged in as a student. But what we're gonna do first is go to insert, chart, column and it should pop up with an example of a column graph, just like mine has. Once this has popped up, we want to left click on it. And you'll see that up here in the top right hand corner of the graph is a little drop down menu, which when I hover over with my mouse says linked chart options. I'm going to click on this and press open source. This will then take me to my Excel spreadsheet, which is linked to the graph. Now mine is just loading. It, you might need to be patient. It might take a couple of seconds to load up. But once your graph is there, if you scroll up, so here's my graph, the data for my graph is up here. I'm going to get rid of period two because we don't need that information. Now, if you delete all of this data straight away, your graph won't work. So you just need to edit it as you go. So I'm going to go down the side here and change it to the months of the year. And if I pause and scroll down, you can see that on my graph, it is changing it as I go. Now I can move this graph down a little bit so I can keep typing. Oops. Oops, need to remember my months of the year. And lucky last is December. Now you can see on my graph that it's added in all my months of the year. Now what I want to do is edit what my rainfall is. Again, I'm not going to delete all of these amounts because it will mess with the graph if I do it all at once. So I'm just going to type in what my average monthly rainfall was, which I've recorded on my slides from today. So you'll need to keep clicking back and forth between your table amount and then this graph. So I'm just going to make them up because I haven't looked at it yet because this is actually, I'm filming this from the past um, yesterday on Tuesday, so I don't know what the amounts are yet, so I'm just going to make them up. So don't copy my amounts, I'm just going to make up some random averages that I think each month might have. It'll probably be a lot higher than this actually now that I've reflected upon it because it's the average total monthly rainfall, so I'm sure we'd be getting more than about 5 mils, but anyway, this is just to show you. Okay, so you can see that my graph has updated. It has also worked out what my um, number increments are going to be on my Y axis. Now that I've added all my rainfall amounts, I can delete that, I need to edit this graph because at the moment, yes, it is telling me the months of the year, but it's actually not telling me anywhere what this graph is. So I need to click on my graph and I'm going to go into conditional formatting. No, I'm not. That's not the one we want. Sorry. This is what we want. Apologies. Ignore the format. Right click on your graph and go to chart axes and title. If you then click on chart title, it should pop up on your right hand side of the screen here what you want your graph to be called. So I'm going to call it Melbourne Monthly. Oops. average rainfall and your your name may be different that's totally fine to change my axes and to label them I'm going to label my horizontal axes months of the year 
and my vertical axis. Now, it depends what your rainfall is being measured in. I'm going to assume it's being measured in millilitres. So I'm going to write average rainfall in millilitres. Okay, and you can see it's editing on my graph as you go. Now, if you want to get really fancy, that's where you can go into your chart style. You can change the colours if you want to. If you do go into format, um, conditional formatting, it'll pop up, not with that, but if I close my chart editor, conditional formatting, you can, oh, where's my colours? I think if you right click, you can change lots of different things. So this chart style, you should be able to alter what the colours are. Okay, so once you're happy with how your graph looks, you think you've included all the information you need to, you've got your title, you've labelled it all correctly, you're going to click back into your Google Doc and you can see that your original graph is there. But now you might see in the top right hand corner, it should say update. Once I click this, it'll update to my graph from Excel. Okay, you might like to add a title to your page. Oops. And that is how you do a column graph. So it was very similar to the way we did a line graph last week. If for whatever reason it's not working for you, don't panic. You can just draw the column graph in your maths book and upload a photo of that. But we would encourage you to give it a go trying to do it on the Google Doc using the Excel spreadsheet. My top tip is I know a lot of people had problems last week with the line graph and they said it wasn't showing up in Excel, just make sure you don't delete all the data from the example graph first, because when you do delete that, for some reason it then doesn't let you make a graph. So just delete and edit it as you go. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing all of your graphs.